or just switching up the ways that we're giving them food, this can be the most practical approach as far as the things that you are in control of to actually help them. So you are an expert on your own body, you are an expert on your own child. The things that I'm gonna to mention today are not just for people who have ADD or ADHD. These are things that are naturally soothing and calming. Welcome to the very first Wellness Wednesday. So I love doing these podcasts because these are an opportunity for me to just get to know some of the questions that you have about your health, your wellness, your nutrition. And as a nutritionist, I get a lot of questions in person and also um, email to me. I would love for you to submit any questions that you may have. If I can answer them or be of any kind of help, I would love to do that. Before we get started, I just wanted to say, as far as taking supplements or anything like that, always consult your doctor, your medical professional. And as always, if you have any concerns with your own wellness, go to your doctor. One of the questions that came in is, can you give nutrition advice for kids who have ADD, ADHD, food ingredients and things like that that may be helpful or maybe a hindrance. So I love this question because I can relate to this question. But if you don't know what ADD or ADHD is, um, it stands for Attention Deficit Disorder or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So we may see this show up in kids as not being able to sit still literally, you know, jumping, moving around, having, it's almost like there is a battery pack and they are just going, going, and they have, their mind is on all different things and, it, and it's like they can't concentrate on any one thing at any given time. But I also wanna say, this is not just that they can't pay attention that's not always the case it's more so that they can't tune out all the other things that they are trying to pay attention to all at once especially if it's something that they consider boring or not challenging it's kind of hard for them to sit still um, and or just take in that information that they're being taught okay so when it comes to ADHD there is a lack of dopamine and dopamine is this neurotransmitter that's considered the reward center of the brain but it also functions in driving motivation in your mood and in attention and focus. So people that have ADD or ADHD, this is an area that's actually a struggle for them. So this, this dopamine is not something that they're getting enough of. So many times they're reaching for things to do that for them. So that is going to be things that are interesting things that are novel and brand new um, so it may look like they switch tasks a lot or it may look like they can't sit still because they are always looking for this input of dopamine and sometimes they even do that through diet which we will get to in a minute and according to add attitude magazine so this is attitude.com i'll link it below People who have ADHD also struggle with executive functioning. And this is defined by attitudemagazine.com as people with executive dysfunction and or ADHD commonly lack the ability to handle frustration, start and finish tasks, recall and follow multi-step directions, stay on track, self-monitor and balance their tasks. So that is just some of the areas of focus that we want to talk about when we're talking about ADHD. So there are some natural things that have been shown to help not just people with ADHD, but people who um, have issues with executive function, people ha who have issues with staying on task and focusing. Hey, um, I'm going to share some natural things that I um, really like. One of the really, really cool things is that there are a lot of natural things that can be used to add to the diet that can possibly help attention. So I did a little digging and a little research, but I also have some personal experience with um, this is the kids stress relief, calm and positive mood. And this is um, Garden of Life brand. This is doctor formulated. It does have four grams of sugar per two gummies. However, this is something that is um, has been shown in animal studies to enhance cognitive function, to be a relaxing agent, to increase brain serotonin, dopamine, and GABA. And this is 
like my husband will even take these and he doesn't have ADD and he knows notices that it gives a calming effect so this is L-theanine and this is a non-protein amino acid and this is found in green tea I've linked an article from the National Institute of Health on the benefits and function um, it's also said to reduce stress anxiety levels it's not a sedative but it, can, it may improve sleep and it can promote relaxation and does not necessarily cause drowsiness so when it comes to supplements you always want to use caution um, if you have any allergies if you are taking any medications you always want to follow that up with your doctor and your pharmacist but this is a natural way these taste great um, I'll show you what they look like So they're not coated in sugar, which is what I like because a lot of um, kids gummies are. They're little bears though, and they also have lavender. And that's the other one that I wanted to talk about. So lavender, I am a huge believer in using herbs because they are natural. And typically a lot of times we can use these in preparations like tea, which are very, very easy to get down, um, especially for me. Um, and they can also be used for things like in diffusers. So you don't always have to take things internally to kind of, uh, you know, get a calmer mood. So that can be things like lavender is really, really great. And a lot of times you'll actually see this in a lot of babies formulas for lotion and it'll say like bedtime or sleepy time a lot of sleepy time teas will also have lavender in them um, and or chamomile so those are the two herbs that i wanted to talk about really quickly just so you know some of the benefits that they may have for you lavender has been shown to calm hyperactivity and calm the mind um, another herb that's generally reported to be safe for children is chamomile and this is a great option for soothing irritability, relieving tension, relaxing, calming anxiety among several other uses. Um, it's also good for the tummy. So um, one of my favorite tea blends, I'll put a picture here and I'll link it below, um, is this chamomile and lavender. I love giving this to my son. I put a little bit of coconut milk in this um, and sometimes I add just a little bit of a sweetener, like a little bit of maple syrup or a little bit of coconut sugar because I wanna watch his sugar intake as well. Um, and that's something that we all enjoy. This is something that you could actually prepare ahead of time, steep this tea, and then you could actually create ice cubes out of this so you could steep this tea and you could just cool it in the refrigerator you could add a little bit of lemon to it a little bit of honey if you wanted to and instead of your regular sweet tea that has a bunch of caffeine in it this is a caffeine off uh, caffeine free alternative as well as it's something that is going to be calming and relaxing and like I said the things that I'm going to mention today are not just for people who have ADD or ADHD these are things that are naturally soothing and calming some other things that you may want to look into are minerals so many of us are deficient in magnesium and that magnesium does over 200 or 300 different chemical processes in our body and we need it for so so many things especially if our body is out of balance and things need to be regulated and with many conditions that's what it comes back to it comes back to something being out of balance or something to something that is um inflamed and there's inflammation in the body and inflammation can happen all over the body these are things that are going to naturally help relax it so a magnesium rich bath would be a great option and that's going to be epsom salt i like to use at least a half of a cup and i like to use the best quality ones that i can find and many times you can find them with lavender and i will link some that i like or i'll put a picture here so that you know kind of what to look for and this is a way where you're not internally taking anything but you're allowing you know our skin is our largest organ and that is an area that we can absorb some of these minerals without actually ingesting them and having to worry about you know an upset stomach or anything like that there are also magnesium sprays that you can use and this is the one that i love i'll link it up i'll put a picture here or link it below and i absolutely love this one especially after i've worked out it does make your skin a little sticky so my husband actually likes to use this be you know before he takes a shower and you could do that as well it does have a little bit of a tingling sensation um, but an epsom salt bath would be an alternative if you didn't want to use the magnesium so when it comes to not just 
ADD or ADHD, but for every single last one of us, it really matters how we are eating our food, what we are eating with our food, and if our food is actually supporting us. So things that are very disruptive to all of us across the board, especially mentally and hormonally, is going to be dysregulated blood sugar. So what does that look like? That looks like taking in something that is a carbohydrate, which will be broken down into sugars, into glucose in the body. And though the body loves to use glucose for energy and it's its preferred form, it also has to store what it doesn't use. And if there's any excess over that, then what ends up happening is the body has gotten too much and it will now dysregulate a lot of different hormone fun hormonal functions in the body. And it will lead to a crash that causes irritability, agitation, um, and with people who have ADHD, this is going to exacerbate their symptoms. So this is going to actually cause them to be extra irritable and even more anxious and even more, um, you know, just, active and bouncing off the walls and not being able to focus to, or even be able to sit down to focus. So having um, a balanced meal, so that's going to look like something that has protein and fiber and fat ideally, so that when you are having something that has sugar, it's not going directly into the bloodstream. So if, you know, when it comes to carbohydrates, we just, you know, eat things that may be healthy and without balancing those things, we are actually causing issues in our blood sugar regulation. And this is especially, um, especially hard for people who have symptoms of ADD and ADHD because they're already struggling to sit still, whether that's physically where you can see it with ADHD or ADD where their mind is just going a million miles a, you know, a minute. And I'm not saying if you think a lot and you can't turn your brain off that you have ADHD, that is something that a doctor has to diagnose. But I am saying that if we are already stressed out, it's harder to make decisions for every single last one of us, whether we have ADD, ADHD or not. So making sure that our blood sugar is regulated. One of the things that is really, really hard to do is to find things like cereals that are not packed with sugar or to find things like, um, you know, breakfast bars that are not packed with, you know, a bunch of different chemicals and things like that. One of the things that I like to do, and I'll share a picture up here, is to have something like a protein box. So these are things that you can make ahead of time and you also know that you're getting balanced nutrition here. So this can look like having um, a gluten-free muffin or if you um, eat um, gluten, this can look like a healthy, <laughs> non-processed, probably not packaged, you know, carbohydrate. So something like a granola bar, I would definitely cons encourage you to consider making these yourself or finding a really, really great brand that is low in sugar. Pairing that with something that is protein rich, I like to put two boiled eggs here um, and then also packing, you know, something that has healthy fat. So this can look like a small handful of almonds. This can look like some raw cashews. This can look like you know, just a balance. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. This is one of the things that our family likes to do. And then for a healthy fat, that can be something like a, can be something like maybe hummus with some carrot sticks or cucumbers. I really like to use that as well. A little bit of salt and pepper. And you've got this protein box that's perfect to be portable. This can also double as lunch. And you can, instead of having that granola bar, you could put something else with that. And that can be something that is, um, balancing the blood sugar that's high in fiber or protein. If you eat dairy, that can be something like a grass-fed cheese. That can be, um, I can go on and on about the food portion, but I'll leave it right there. You want to eat balanced, starting the day with something like cereal or oatmeal. And though oatmeal may sound healthy, and it can be in context, if it's also paired with something that is packed with protein and fiber and or a healthy fat with that also. So that is going to help blood sugar stay regulated so that there is not this crazy rise and then this plummeting fall that is going to lead to a lot of agitation and extra anxiety. And this is this goes for all of us, not just those who have ADD and ADHD. Since 
someone who has ADHD struggles with dopamine, um, dopamine is what you know gets you know gets released in our brain that makes us feel good. So if we're eating chocolate or if we're eating sugar, this is going to happen to each and every one of us. But it ends up being a vicious cycle for those who have ADHD because they're seeking that reward and that pleasure signal and then you know if you're eating sugar because you want that dopamine um, kind of excitement so that feeling of having a dopamine release which is a really good feeling and once that sugar wears off or that crash happens you go seeking more sugar so this is when a lot of times people who have adhd will reach for more sugar or reach for more carbohydrates which turn into sugar so that they can get that feeling of pleasure that the dopamine that they're lacking and constantly seeking will give them i'm, I'm so as stanford health states sugar crashes generally cause us to be incredibly distracted throughout the day which leads to a lack of productivity Activity and concentration, confusion, abnormal behavior, the inability to complete routine tasks. So this is just for anyone, not just someone who has ADHD. So imagine this perfect storm of events for someone who does have ADHD. This is going to exacerbate all the things that they're already struggling with and the things that if your child has ADHD, you may be struggling with for them as well. So protein is one of the best ways to mitigate this blood sugar spike because protein helps us to achieve satiety. So that means that we're satiated and we're not gonna continue to reach for things to meet either our carbohydrate want, we're gonna keep reaching for things that are gonna spike our dopamine because we feel satisfied and we have a small trickle of glucose as opposed to one that gets directly into our bloodstreams right away. According to Attitude Magazine, we want to be careful of food dyes. Anyone wants to be careful of this anyways, I'm always saying this. So food dyes, dyes spe specifically mentioned here are red dye number three, red dye number 40, and yellow dye number five. So these are of particular concern for those who have ADHD because these dyes increased hyperactivity. And for some children, it worsens their symptoms. Speaking of yellow number five, this can be found in so many packaged items. And if you're new here, I'm always talking about eating real whole food in this whole state or whole food ingredient. I'm always talking about whole food ingredients. So yellow number five can be found in packaged goods. It can be found in the breading of chicken nuggets, which a lot of kids eat chicken nuggets, right? Um, this can be found in jarred pickles, in frosting, in icing, in breakfast cereals, in bread products, in juices, in sodas, in gum, in candy, just to name a few. So the best way to avoid these things is to focus on real whole food. And when it comes to all packaging foods, I always say this, read the ingredients so you know what you're consuming and you know what your child is consuming. And I know like none of us are perfect here and sometimes slip ups are gonna happen. And sometimes you're out and about and you're gonna grab the, you know, the thing that you, the quickest thing that you can possibly get, right? Just to put something in their bellies. I'm one of seven kids, I understand. Sometimes you are just doing, not sometimes, you are doing the best that you can do. But as we know better, it's a lot easier to do better. And I am not an expert um, on any of this. You are an expert on your own body. You are an expert on your own child. And as we are, you know, taking things out of their diet or putting things in or just switching up the ways that we're giving them food, this can be the most practical approach as far as the things that you are in control of to actually help them and to help them to focus better and to support their focus and their hyperactivity. And this is one of the best ways to do it, I believe is a food first approach to make sure that their bodies are getting everything that it needs to begin with in the manner that it needs to get them. So we don't constantly want to spike our blood sugar regardless of who you are and regardless of what you may be of what you may struggle with or not struggle with. None of us wants to constantly be jacking up our blood sugar and having these glucose spikes. If you have any questions for me, anything that I can shed a little bit of light on, I would be more than happy to. Um, hello at styleandstewardship.com with the subject line pod questions. Until next time, your life matters, what you do with it matters. So what will you steward well? Peace.